Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another new episode of Computer Central 101. Um, it's already Thursday, July 16th, and there needs to be this video and two more videos made by Tuesday, July 21st, before I leave for vacation on Wednesday, July 22nd. So I really needed to make this video, and um, we're going to discuss a lot of Apple products and we're going to sort of see where apple is headed but this will be mostly on the new ipod touch which was released yesterday just when we thought apple was going to start phasing out the ipod touch drop it off they released a new ipod touch so um that's mostly what this episode is going to be on we're also going to talk about the macbook the 2015 version um the mac mini and where apple is headed with that and um, I think that would be it for that this episode. And we're also going to talk about the other iPods and where Apple is headed with those. So um, without further ado, let's begin. So there's not much footage about this new iPod Touch, but um, Apple's website does have a few great pictures. So if we just go to Apple's website here, and um, we can see right off the bat, it says iPod Touch A8 chip, which is the same chip as the iphone 6 8 megapixel eyesight camera which is a bit worse than the camera on the iphone 5s but it's comparable um and, uh and five new colors so i mean some of the colors are just repeats from last time and some of the colors are taken away from last time so you can see space gray blue gold pink and silver which is a very odd color palette so um and then if you go to buy now you only see space silver gold space gray pink blue and red so i don't know where what happened to the green and yellow variants and i don't know why apple dropped those but the gold is definitely a nice addition so and once again this is a gorgeous device this is this is extremely thin and light it feels like it just disappears and even though the design is the same as the old fifth generation ipod touch it's still an amazing device so um music your music wherever you go that's pretty old that's not really upgraded with this new ipod touch but then we have gaming and um the a8 chip is it apple claims at least it's 10 times faster than the previous generation and they jumped three processor generations with this new a8 chip now note that this a8 chip is clocked like 300 megahertz slower than the iphone 6 a8 chip so it's about the same as the a7 chip which is still amazing it's a two two um two processor generation jump without making a big redesign now you know they did remove the apple loop on the back but that's the only change they've made to the body of this ipod touch um, and there's metal integrated with this, and there's an M8 motion coprocessor. Now, there's no fingerprint sensor because think about it. Who needs a fingerprint sensor on an iPod Touch? Um, there's a 4-inch retina display, and I don't know why they didn't upgrade it. They could have upgraded it, but then it would have cost more. And you'll see why it might have been smart not to upgrade it um, in a few minutes. So, photos, they upgraded the camera. It's sort of like the one on the 5 iPhone 5, um, it's, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if you took it up to a 5S, if you compared it to a 5S. It now supports 120 frames per second slow motion video. The FaceTime HD camera did not change. There's improved face detection though, but it didn't really change. Um, there's iOS 8, and the new iPod Touch is getting, I mean the old iPod Touch, the fifth generation, is getting quite slow on iOS 8. So you can be assured that this iPod Touch is going to handle iOS 8. And when iOS 9 comes out, it's going to handle them really great. So, um, and then it says fully loaded. It shows you some apps. It shows you some social networking. It says it, it supports um, 802.11ac. So if your router supports 802.11ac, um, you're going to have better wire wireless connection here. And that's all. But then when you go to the buy now page, um no, specifically the compare iPod models, you can see Apple's refresh their iPod Nano and Shuffle as well. Now these don't count as a new generation. They're simply color refreshes to match the iPod Touch's color palette. So um the only changes in this new iPod Touch, well, they're huge monumental changes. 3 processor generations up. 
No Apple Loop, which is eh. But three processor generations up, faster connectivity, and a new camera. So, um, it's a pretty big change. And new colors, of course. If I was to buy this iPod Touch, I'd go with the gold, because I really like how the gold looks. I'd buy all of them in gold. I really like how the gold looks. It looks amazing. Um, and the 16 gig model starts at only $199. So you can't go wrong with this iPod Touch. You get an A8 processor, an M8 motion coprocessor, fast Wi-Fi, a great camera, all for $199, and 16 gigabytes of storage. So this is sort of Apple's sweet spot here. And we scroll through, there's nothing else. You can click buy now here. And um, I'd probably go for the 32 gigs of storage. So I'd probably f go for the gold 32 gigabytes of storage. And that would cost me $250. But the 16 gigabytes is pretty great as well. So um, that's the new iPod Touch. And now we're going to take a look at... Mm, I think we're going to take a look at the MacBook. The 2015 MacBook coming up next. So um, now we have the MacBook, and this MacBook is actually very interesting because it's Apple's least powerful notebook, but it's the highest priced. So um, the, the reason for this highest priced thing is because it's extremely thin and light, and it packs a full features display, keyboard, and trackpad into 13 millimeters. Now, to engineer a full keyboard, they had to make the illusion of you pressing the keys down. So how they did that... um. They, according to their words, they had to redesign each key and its underlining mechanism. And basically what that means, they had fake presses. So the keys, and you, you can research this on your own later, but they're called butterfly keys. And you can go Google that and watch the MacBook videos and all that. But there's probably going to be a MacBook video on screen so you can see how they did that. And that way they were able to fit a full featured keyboard into 13 millimeters of thickness, which is actually pretty amazing. So um, it also has a retina display. And there's nothing really new about this retina display. It's it's 12 inches and it's a retina display. Um. And the trackpad is not actually, you don't, when you click it, you don't actually click it down. When you click it, it sends a vibration to your hand so you can feel yourself clicking it down. Now, um, they had to do this because the normal trackpad mechanism is too thick for this thin notebook. So that's actually another really amazing innovation on their part. And they added force touch, which if you don't know what that is, um, Google the new Apple Watch, or just Google Force Touch, and you'll see what that is. It's a new way to interact with your trackpad, basically. Um, it has wireless, obviously. and But the only thing wrong with this MacBook is that, first of all, it starts at $1,300, and it's Apple's least powerful notebook because it uses the Intel Core M. It doesn't have an i-series processor because it's so thin that the chipset can only be as big as an iPhone 6's chipset. Everything else has to be battery. It's so thin. That's... That's how much they had to cut from this. They had to cut processing power, processing power, sorry, and they had to cut all these ports. They have only one USB-C port. Um, so for every everything you want to connect to this MacBook besides charging, you have to buy a separate adapter. So I don't know why they did this. They could have fit a USB port, um, which would have been much more convenient, but they fit a USB-C port instead. Perhaps this is what Apple think thinks is the future of notebooks, only one USB-C port, and then wires are sort of going to die out. But if you really want wires, you have to buy an adapter from this USB-C to anything else you want to put in this MacBook. It runs OS X Yosemite, and it... It um so Windows sort of gulps energy while OS ten sips energy. And um no fan. There's no fan in this computer and that's why. Everything else is battery and there's only one one small chipset the size of an iPhone six. So then Apple is advertising OS ten, built in apps, and then you scroll down and you see the price in small print. Thirteen hundred dollars. 
Now, that's sort of the deal breaker, because if you compare that to the MacBook Air 11 inches, okay, you have um, 0.4 inches more display size, but the MacBook Air 11 inches comes with a dual-core Intel Core i5 processor um, and 512 gigabytes of flash storage, and it's only a bit heavier than the MacBook. But the MacBook, the MacBook comes with an Intel Core M processor, which is actually much worse than the Intel Core i5 processor, and that's how they were able to, um, that's how they were able to make it, that's how they were able to cut the fan from it. Um, so Apple has cut too many things from this MacBook to make it a worth it deal, but this is a starting point. To, the f to envisioning the future of laptops. And Apple's good that they kept around the Air and Pro laptops because if they didn't, then this MacBook would definitely not sell. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't buy this MacBook because they had to cut too many things from it to make it th this, this thin and light. So um, that's the MacBook. I think Apple had to cut way too much from it. And maybe you should wait for the second generation before you consider this. Um, in the meantime, you could look at the MacBook Air 11 inches because it starts at $400 less than the normal MacBook, which is still a, a lot, but um, I wouldn't pay a premium for this MacBook. Now, um, I don't think we're going to talk about the Mac Mini today. That'll be another episode, so we're going to go ahead and conclude this episode now. So thank you for joining me on this episode covering the iPod Touch and the 2015 MacBook. And I hope to see you next time. Um, episode 6 will be released over the weekend. And episode 7, um, that'll be a live stream. So the time for episode 7 will be set during episode 6. And I'm not sure what episode 6 will be about yet. But we'll see. So, um... Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Or if you really like this video and really like my channel, um, hit the red subscribe button. It's free and it only takes a few seconds. And um, other than that, watch my last video, which was on, what was it on? It was on, oh yeah, it was on Modern Design Perspectives. The video before that was on Windows 10. And then the video two videos ago, or three videos ago, was on running Android on your PC. And season one is also filled with great tech trips, t tips and tricks. And you can check that out in a separate playlist. So, see you next time.